James Shramko here, and I'm also here with Ezra Firestone. G'day, buddy. Ladies and gentlemen. Now we are... that was my that was my version of a hello, by the way. Hi, <laughs> yeah. everyone. That was like the best intro you could hope for. It was kind of better than the one we had at an event that we spoke at recently, and we presented this particular presentation live. It was hilarious. But what we thought we'd do in the uh, good old nature of the leverage of the internet is to grab the slide deck and to run through the slides with a little bit of commentary that we could share with people who are special and dear to our heart so that we could... Um, you know, get the message out there. And like the funny thing is people say that kind of stuff, right? Like people who are special and dear to our heart. But I actually think that we are probably the only dudes who actually mean that. Like we really care about you and your business and how it goes and like what's going on and whether or not you have accurate information. We genuinely care about it. Yeah, we, we don't actually really have anything to sell except that the idea that um, we want to give value and uh, hopefully this will inspire people to create and to, to get as much reward out of podcasting as what we have, uh, which has been substantial, and we'll cover that in the slide. So you're ready for it? Let's roll. All right. I'm sitting on a bouncy ball, by the way. Wonderful. Thank you for sharing that. Um, yeah, it's got a little back support. It's got one of these little handles I can bounce around the room. Yeah. Well, uh, last time we were sitting down together, uh, before the presentation that we just did recently, uh, we were presenting it at my event, and something strange happened at that event, and I, I um, put it down to this. The, uh, <laughs> the cup of tea you were having for your sore throat or whatever sickness that you are bestowed when you, when you travel, you, sometimes you get a bit bent out of shape, but that led to something unusual. Well, I don't know how unusual it is, and I don't know why everyone just won't let this go. It, I had to pee. Unusual. That I happens. Think, I've never seen it before. You've never seen anyone pee before? I have, but not halfway through the presentation. Okay, not well, halfway. Well, sometimes you just got to do it. It was, it was near the end, right? We were almost done. We were like, in fact, I even checked with you. I said, hey, yeah, dude, you're are, like, we we, done? are we done? Are we done? And I'm like, almost. Just, you know, hey, uh, yeah, well, we dude. just had some Q&A. I've got to go pee. Basically, I, I had to get up and pee, and, and I had to do that. And so I went and did it. I even got back and answered a question I hadn't even heard. You know, the, so, the interesting thing is that – I didn't think you could top that, but I was wrong. And the, the last presentation that we did, you had a confession that you'd broken some magical, mystical ring of that Clay Collins had loaned to you. And well, uh, we had a, a stray dog, allegedly, and a runaway it child. It was definitely a stray dog. Maybe guy, the other yeah. way around. I'm not sure. No. It was, it was, it was, it was kind of weird. It was very strange. It tends to happen when we get on stage together. So yes, we're strange, but we also know about this podcasting stuff. Yeah, so we're going to cover why why do we podcast and uh, get into that. A big reason is the changes in Google's search engine algorithm it really shook up a lot of website owners in the last few years. There was, of course, the, the big panda. Uh, there was the penguin, which was probably even more severe for most business owners. And then now we've got hummingbird. So the real theme here is that Google keeps changing the platform and it's not the only place you have to, to play. You don't have to be Google dependent. Now, as a search engine optimizer and, and running a successful business in this space, it's still very popular and lucrative and worth getting results for. But podcasts will add an extra channel to it. It will get you into a different platform that is not SEO dependent. However, if you use some of the things we talk about, you will pick up SEO as a byproduct. And I'm talking specifically about the way you set up your website and structure your show notes. Well, it's, it's channel diversification, right? It's like ever since uh, I've been online, there have been different channels that were very um, effective to market in, Google and Facebook and Amazon and iTunes is a, is a wide open channel for people who like to um, create content and have conversations with communities of people, which is basically anyone who has a business should have a content marketing arm, should be owning the race course, should be um, communicating with that community of people about more than just the products they're selling and then uh, making them additional relevant offers. And podcasting allows you, gives you probably the best way to do that. Beautiful. Now, in a global data snapshot, and these numbers apparently come from the U.S. Census uh, or U.S. Stats Department, whatever that's called, of the 7 billion people, uh, 2.5 billion of them have internet and 6.5 billion of them have mobile subscriptions. So 
six and a half billion. Yeah, it's like and a ninety-three go, percent penetration. What this I, means I'd go is, as far as to say is a billion of those have iOS devices. A lot of them will have iOS devices, and the, the reality is, your iTunes show is probably easier for someone to get access to than a general web-based application. That's my main point there. Uh, so this is what a, uh, an episode looks like on an iPhone. You know, People can see your show. You have a picture, a description, a topic. They can easily push one button to subscribe, and that will pull in every episode you ever publish, and they can download past episodes. So that is a pretty cool feature, um, and, and this is just off an iPhone 5, but your show can be on somebody's iPhone. That's the key point, and it can continually update with the one press of the button once. Very powerful. So probably one of the most popular topics we covered is the hunting versus farming thing. And the hunter is the one out there looking for the next meal, you know, shoot the, the prey, eat it, and then it's gone. But podcasting is probably a lot more like farming where you're building and nurturing and tending to the fields or the, the, the orchards or the, the grape vines so that you have a continual harvest. So podcasts pay. You build up an audience, then you can run offers to that audience. You can um, build and, and continually grow your audience numbers, and you will find that this is a long-term sustainable traffic machine, but it also can be very profitable. And we'll give you some examples of how we made profit. It's, it's one of the best business models um, from, a, from the standpoint of continuing to pay off over time. Yeah, it's just it just grows. And think of it like an orchard. You could just go out and pick the fruit anytime you want. It's always there. You don't have to go constantly go and find the next meal. And you can grow cherries or watermelons or yeah. grapes or pears. It depends on what kind of content you want to put out. Yeah, you could get weird with it. You could grow things like rambutan, a little bit strange. I don't even know what that is, but you could definitely grow it. Uh, <laughs> returning visitors. You could grow fungus if you want. You might already yeah, why, be growing fungus. Why would fungus. you want to grow fungus? Do people eat that? Well, people like, yeah, mushrooms are very popular. Okay, yeah. I'm not talking about so fungus on your food. body, dude. I, I'm not talking about like toenail fungus. Because <laughs> I think you have <laughs> talked about that before. Okay, so um, when we look at our site stats, a lot of the people are coming back, and that's uh, that's different to the, the hunting thing. You know, if your people are coming back, you're a farmer. If more than half the people come back, you're probably farming. And this is a good thing. You're going to continually have that income stream and the traffic stream. The idea is that you can reach your consumer whenever you want. You just have to publish an episode. Now, think about it like little baby turtles that I saw down here in uh, Cabo in um, Mexico. These little suckers here, you know, they, they look after them. They put them in a sand pit. They date it. They um, bring them out with gloves. They gent gently let them crawl back into the ocean, and they have a much – higher chance of survival and they grow into huge big super fat sea turtles like massive uh, like you couldn't even pick it up to size and that's what we're doing with our audience we're nurturing them like little baby turtles and growing them up into to big mature uh, customers it takes a long time right this is farming However, you know, it, it continues to pay dividends year over year. It's not a one-trick pony. It's not a, you know, it doesn't fruit one time and then go away. It's like this thing that, you know, people, like our number, well, we'll get to that. <laughs> yeah, look at you. You know it's coming. Fancy that. I'm going to just zoom in on this graph. But this is how long uh, people visit the site. I found that 57.5% uh, of people visiting the site will opt in. On the, of the opt-ins, right? Of all the opt-ins, half of them, more than half of them opted in the first time because we've got some good on-page conversion elements and we'll, we'll share the exact way that we do that. The, the, the most interesting thing to me is that 20% of my opt-ins opted in in that 12 to 30-day period. So they've come back. They've like, oh, yeah, this, this is pretty cool. I'm now ready to give you my email address. That's a fifth of the visitors. And that disproves a lot of the commonly held belief that, you know, if you don't get them the first time, they're gone forever. Not so true. Not if you have something useful and less hypey, less pitchy, less pressurized. You know, it's, um, it's, it's a, a trend that we're seeing in marketing, relationship marketing, people engaging with your content and engaging with you a couple of times before they actually go as far as, joining your email list or engaging with one of your product offers, right? Like this is a, uh, you're missing out on basically what this displays. If you're not doing this, you're missing out on 25% of the opportunity. 
Yeah. Uh, and also this thing sells. It sells like crazy. In fact, the reason I got into podcasting was I was invited to go on someone else's podcast and I didn't know what how it really worked. I didn't know if it was live or pre-recorded but because they were doing it in a radio studio and I dialed in. So I was on the telephone. They interviewed me. They published the show. This is Tim Reed and Luke Moulton on Small Business Big Marketing. And you can go and look up that old episode. So I talked about my course there and people bought my course like crazy and it was enough for Tim to go, hello, hello, hello. I could actually make money from a podcast. And Tim invited me to join him with a new podcast and we call that Freedom Ocean. And I got to learn how to set up a podcast, the show format, how to sort of take it up a notch in terms of audio quality. So Tim was kind of like my um, founding instructor on the podcasting technique. And then I've been able to carry that baton along with Ezra. And we started our podcast one year ago from when we are recording this. And now that I've got my podcast in, in tune, I make sales every single day for even just affiliate products, but certainly for my own business. This works for all different businesses, e-commerce, affiliate marketing, service professionals, uh, furniture stores. <laughs> I did a podcast about stand-up desks and people go and start buying stand-up desks from the store. This thing works. You know, it comes back to the fact that the podcast is the medium where you have um, the highest engagement with a consumer. You build a relationship, like they're there with you for an hour at a time. In your, in your, in your, you're in their ears, so it, you you can be a lot more influential over that group of people. High ticket sales are a great thing to do on podcasts. Yeah, and the thing is, you're building up a show. It's a show rather than just a podcast. So. Uh, the first one that, that hit number one was Freedom Ocean. The next one is I actually went and just submitted my internet marketing speed blog to iTunes. Even though I had audios, I wasn't putting them on iTunes. And I just retrospectively uh, hooked it up to iTunes and it smashed it into number one. And then Super Fast Business was my next one. And then Think Act Get, our show, number one. So that's four in a row out of the four that I've produced. Um, now I'm I'm running three of those, but I'm starting a new podcast this year, and I expect it'll hit number one as well. Now, the other thing is I've also been able to do this for many clients. There's so many people in the super fast business membership community who have podcasts, and I've also got clients who have released them, and all of them have done spectacularly well. In fact, if we have a little look, uh, our first episode from about a year ago, Ezra, has now almost had 8,000 listens. It's the number one ep podcast episode of all time. It's the it's the number one that I've recorded, yeah, our first episode. And why is that? It's because people join the show later on down the track. Now, we're up to somewhere like episode 39 at the time of recording this. And people will go, you know what, this is pretty cool. I'm going to go back and listen. And just to give you a sense of the variety, the other episodes that were popular were with uh, Noah Kagan in the startup niche, with Victoria Gibson about Facebook marketing. I uh, had a Silver Circle intensive behind the scenes with Steve-O. Uh, I had some SEO information. So varied topics, uh, but all very popular. Now, if you were to calculate the cost of getting those cost per clicks uh, with paid traffic or Facebook ads, then it would actually add up. In fact, I'm fortunate enough to get up to 4,500 episode downloads in a single day these days. It's, it's quite common um, to get thousands. But I'm sure it won't be long until I get a significantly higher volume the way that my business is continually uh, to, to increase in volume. And I'm sure you're seeing the same sort of things on smartmarketer.com. I do get quite a lot of views, and I'm very happy about that. <laughs> cool. Uh, so where are these things coming from? This, this screenshot is really interesting to me because uh, although I'm not tracking smartmarketer.com, I am tracking super fast business, Think at Get and Freedom Ocean, my top three podcasts now. Uh, super fast business is an interesting one where I have long form interview podcasts like we do on Think at Get and Freedom Ocean. They might be 40 minutes, it might be two people. But then I also intersplice that with three to five minute videos that we strip out the audio and turn into a podcast. But the overwhelming uh, outcome here is that high volume, even if they're short, is going to smash it for overall listenership. It is, it's literally uh, five, you know, four or five times 
more powerful having a higher frequency. It doesn't even matter if they're not long episodes. It's good to know for podcasting. Like the most popular podcasts, the podcasts that get the most listens are the ones that are produced every day. We try to go for weekly on Think Act Get. If you can if you can get to weekly, that's a pretty good frequency. Weekly would be a great standard to live by. Uh, we haven't got there, obviously. We're only up to thirty nine in a year. And uh, you know, for various reasons. But if we could do fifty episodes a year, it will well, I guarantee you we'll get to fifty episodes in twenty fourteen. What we did um, notice was when we had a slight lag that our our site visits and listenership dwindled a bit. And and some people actually told us, Hey, because you weren't putting out episodes, I had to go and find something else. And I found another podcast and um, you know, you forget about ours. So we actually lose listeners if we don't keep the frequency. And I found the, the opposite is true. It was super fast business. The more frequently I can put out episodes, the more chances I have. It's like long line fishing. The more chances I have of people finding my podcast, and that's why it's significantly more powerful. Uh, in fact, I've now crossed a million downloads. When we took, when we presented, we were on the verge of it. Uh, we reached it that day, and uh, it's it's powering along. And I think we'll get to two million much faster than we got the first million. In terms of who's, uh, you know, what devices people are using, half of them are iOS, iPhone, iPad. That's uh, it's a lot of Apple stuff going on there. And then there's the Windows in the orange, and then the green is the Macintosh. You know, if we if we look at what happened with podcasting, it got really popular when the iPad, uh, the iPod came out, right? When the and, and by the way, if you think about iPad, it just sounds like someone with a Midwestern accent saying iPod iPad. Anyways, um, the point is that, um, yeah, yeah, I just want to throw that out there. That uh, podcasting got real popular when um, iPods came out, and uh, and then it got like significantly more popular uh, in 2012 when the number of tablets uh, in the United States tablet owners doubled in a single month, doubled over Christmas. So basically, everyone has one of these iOS devices, and they have access to your to your content right there in their hand. And so there's just so much listenership. Yeah, the iPad really is what's tipped it over. And it's the perfect device for reading and for listening to media. So uh, the other thing is the away. audio medium. You could be doing this anywhere. You could be walking the dog, uh, driving a car, on a plane. You don't have to watch something. You can just listen and it opens up the, the potential at the gym, doing a workout, etc. The, the reality is you can be your own superhero right now. You don't have to go through uh, the book publishing process. You don't have to commit to rich media of video, even though I highly recommend it if you can. The audio medium is available for you. It's simply a case of connecting up your website to iTunes using a plugin that guides you through every step of the way and you need so little to get started. You just need really just flip on record with a good quality mic, which we'll cover in a minute, and you'll be able to get yourself uh, a show. And suddenly you'll, you'll develop all that power that comes with having a show. In fact, I got asked to speak in Thailand uh, to, to another popular podcast, the uh, Tropical MBA guys had an event there, and they built a whole community off their podcast and monetized it with a community and with an event. And they asked me to come and speak. So it really opens up opportunities. And of course, positioning yourself as an expert speaker or authority is that is just one of those uh, glorious power authority things that happens when you're a published author and it creates more of a, a following. It increases conversions. It helps you with your price points. It creates more opportunities. It's like a uh, opportunity machine. So the podcast is really how that came about because these guys found me from Freedom Ocean. Now, if you Google my name or Ezra's name, what you'll find is that people are looking for the things that I actually sell, uh, products, websites, uh, SEO, uh, my, my product names, Traffic Grab. They want to see my Twitter. They want to find interviews. And that's exactly what I want. I want to control my own reputation. And the same for Ezra. They're looking for his e-commerce, his brown box formula, Ezra from New York City, uh, his uh, mastermind. <laughs> they want to know and about they want to my know if wedding. You're I, I get it. You know, it's the ponytail, right? I don't know, man. I think that's just the strangest <laughs> thing ever. 
Do they got maybe just uh, like a most hot hot bachelor or something? They want to see if you're um, available, but you're not. I am. I am off Beautiful the market. Wife. Okay, so uh, we even created some fans who started designing things for us and sending us in uh, website skins and t-shirts and stuff. It, it it that show feel. We've even had someone say that it uh, they feel like. Uh, it's it reminds them of a craft beer label. You know what craft beer is, Ezra? Well, I, we just had recorded an episode. <laughs> I, I have no. I, I thought it was like a brand of beer, right? Like I'm not up on the beer lingo. I don't know, man. Yeah, but anyway, uh, apparently it's, it's, a, it's a cult. It's a it creates its own little tribe. People send yeah, us in. It does, pictures. and people start. Yeah, they, they, like they. Well, there you go. Um, That's Jared's it, ears. It's, it's and, and his nose. Uh, it's pretty it funny. Like but yeah, Bean you end up with this balls. like. Such a uh, uh, like I've never seen a more engaged community. I've never been part of more in a more engaged community other than a forum community, right? Like it's it's as engaged as a forum community, which is incredible, really. Exactly. When you consider that people are just listening. Yeah, they're really engaged, and they they make a lot of comments, and we'll cover how you can maximize that. In terms of podcasts, it really is a big platform, as 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 you have with YouTube. Fill, fill me in on Crackle here. Don't know what it is, but. All right. Uh, I mean, I haven't dived into that, and, and you know, I couldn't really care less about NBA or NHL. But my point is, it's such a big platform; it's right up there with all the big ones. And and I noticed that just for in the Australian iTunes, we just um, in the ITV, uh, Apple TV, we've got uh, Red Bull now, which is pretty cool. I I just saw that yesterday. But uh, all right, so we're talking about what is the podcast? It's, it's basically Apple's own platform. You can choose a category, and you'll find a category for your own show um john lee dumas is in the business category he's done really well in a short space of time and uh he's got a community of podcasters as well and we have a community of podcasters in super fast business our membership has a lot of podcasters as well uh you probably want to know how you structure it so there's a few different structures one i like to call the robinson crusoe it's it's where it's just you recording you do it by yourself on your pat malone alone and that's just turning on the mic and talking. And there is quite a few podcasts like that. Uh, not Probably not the uh, easiest one unless you're very comfortable with yourself. And it is um, potentially could be boring unless you're extremely witty or something. If you take a slight twist and you turn it into an Oprah format, that's where you interview someone. Oprah's the, the interviewer and she pulls out the, the flavor from each of her guests and that's pretty much how you run Smart Marketer and I run Super Fast Business. I get guests on and uh, I talk to them and then the other ones are just me by myself. doing. And I want to point out, uh, I, I want to make a, a note on that, that you've got to be careful not to just become, like you've got to uh, add value. You can't just interview people, otherwise you're not seen as, um, how you know, you know what I'm trying to articulate well, here, Well, I think you're referring to what Seth Godin said about why he won't do interviews with some people. What did he say? I think it was along the lines of he's sick of people just, you know, utilizing him but not not adding any extra value than than just being a guy asking questions. Yeah. So and if I, you're going to do an interview model, make sure that you're that you that you're coming to the table to talk to these people about stuff and you've got things to say about whatever you're talking about. Not everyone interviews very well. <laughs> I've I've had a lot of interviews and sometimes they give you nothing. They just like they ask question after question. They give you no comments or replies other than a standard response. And it's it's hard to work with that. You feel like it's it's not giving the best value of what you could be giving. When someone's more interactive, they want maybe even debate slightly. The the best interviews I've had are where I bring on a guest and I did this with Pat Flynn, I did it with John Lee Dumas, and I did it with um uh Derek Halpern, where I have a bit of a debate with them or, I, or where I uh, sort of put a different point of view to them and ask them about that and I get their reaction on it. And those were wildly popular episodes. I did it with Dane Maxwell as well. It would really make them think and uh, it turned the interview into something more magical for the listener because it's like, yeah, he's asking the questions I really want him to ask, which is one of the techniques we'll cover in a minute. So for my show, this is what it would look like on uh, Apple TV. It's got a description, it has the genre, the format, you know, the length is, is short for a lot of them. And in fact, this one was one minute long. It was really that simple. One minute. And all I did was take someone else's video, put it on my site, 
they they give me permission to do that, of course. And then I just read a commentary about what that uh, what the key lesson is. But the key with that one is frequency. This is your show, Ezra. It's uh, it's got a description and the genre, episode length. And people can scan down and find the topics that grab them. So it's really important to put a good headline. That's a good looking picture. <laughs> so the other formats like the Batman and Robin, that's where you know, if one guy's like the superpower and the other one's sort of the assistant, that's it's kind of like um, the way Freedom Ocean started where I was the uh, the expert and Tim was asking all the questions like the, the Robin, like How about, what about this, what about that? And now it's turned more into a different type of show because we sort of ran out of uh, genre with that. Tim didn't want to continually play the guy asking the questions, and I totally understand that. And it was easy for me to always be the expert, harder for him. Is that, is but, that show dead now? No, it's still going. It's, uh, it's basically uh, the last episode we did was in uh, the end of last year. Maybe we've done one since. No, it looks like the end of last year. It's still going, but I'm starting a new one. Because uh, you know I have a far more time abundance than Tim does, so I've just got to keep rolling. Now our sort of shows like the Starsky and Hutch, where we're both on a level playing field, and uh, it's cool. So think at get, we're both. Um, what I? Who am I? Who, which one are, are you? Which one well, am I? See, you're the blonde one, and I'm the the dark hair. That's one. right. Oh, there so, you go. <laughs> uh, I mean, as if it needed to be asked. But anyway, the uh, <laughs> the deal is we're we're equals. We're on a on. A, we bring different flavors to the show, and we work together on it. And that's that's a really good sustainable format. Uh, what happens when these show up in the marketplace is that our other shows pop up underneath it, uh, and that's a great way to leverage a podcast is to have another podcast and obviously the audience will jump around between yours and mine and our joint show so we're sort of aligning ourselves in the marketplace and we'll come back to this slide and we'll show you what else you can do as another tip now here's a podcast format interview and i have to give some credit to dan andrews from tropical mba he helped me uh, uh on one of the interviews i did i sort of dredged out of him his format and i like this and it's pretty much what formed the basis for our show as well. A funny audio grab before the intro, uh, a, a professional sounding bumper, then a, a little narrative about the, the episode, what's the title of the show, the topic. We tease what's coming. We make a joke. We try to. If we were funny, we'd make more content. Uh, we really um, get to the meat of it. Go on. That was meant to be funny. That was just a funny oh, yeah. sound. Uh, yes, and then we not, about... it was a total fail. That was just, <laughs> just you can't try funny. I I feel like every time I try to be funny, I fail miserably. Oh no, I've had, had some. Had, I had a fail as recently as this morning. I was like, um, I went, I was reaching down to get something on the bottom shelf of the fridge, and I found myself in a surfing position, and I thought that was hilarious. I'm like, hey, check this out. I'm surfing. I got no reaction at all. Anyway, <laughs> I get into the news. <laughs> Uh, shouts from the web, that's where you uh, read out the comments that people make about the show, and that's a really important part. We'll touch on that again. Questions, um, iTunes reviews, tips, uh, an outro, and then I've just put a sort of a couple of questions that, that uh, it's kind of like the John Lee Dumas format. What strategy have you been using? What led to you using this? Have you faced problems? What were the results? And uh, have a response. Now, interestingly, John Lee Dumas has the same format for every single show, like the same questions for every guest. I think it's absolutely boring, but it's obviously worked. He's got so many listeners. Uh, it's probably a part of it, the consistency. So a consistent format is probably a recipe for success, but pick one that you're happy to roll through each time. Your role is to ask the questions people want answered if you're interviewing someone. Not just the gen generic ones that everyone asks. I, I mean, it's so boring. So tell us a bit about yourself. Uh, you know, what's your background? You know, what, and how did you stumble into internet marketing? And uh, uh, you know, it's the same. If you were to start from scratch and you only had a hundred dollars and thirty days to make a thousand dollars, what would you do? Oh, these these questions suck. They're the worst questions. Ask something no one's ever heard before. Ask questions people really want to know. Uh, you know, like, uh, do you actually work as much as you say you do? Or those sort of things are far more interesting. 
Are you still there, buddy? Oh, I'm with you. I'm just letting you. I'm letting you roll, baby. This is your show. I'm just. A, this I'm is just, a, you know. This is a joint venture here. I, I want to. All right. All right. Well, uh, uh, okay. I got stuff to say. I mean, I'll get in here. You know, I got stuff to say. Um, I don't actually have anything to say about this particular topic because I'm not sure <laughs> okay. what we're talking about. I was totally spaced out, man. I wasn't paying attention. That's all right. Um, Contro- I know my voice like lulls you to sleep. Controversy. <laughs> it's good if you can have controversy. We have controversy in our show, don't we, Ezra? We do. It, people really like it when we don't agree. And, and let's face it, man, we don't agree on stuff. From we time don't to agree time. on some stuff. Like I, I, um, like you saw a speaker at this event that you thought was terrible, and I, th- I thought he was horrible. Yeah, and the reality is, him. a lot of what he said is probably actually accurate, but it doesn't make it right. Right. It doesn't make him not a jerk is all oh, yeah. I'm saying. still a jerk. And Absolutely. everyone loved him. And one of the things that I was so blown away by, and guys, you, you can take this to your podcast, is people really liked the uh, uh, sort of – yeah, they're drawn to like, you know, if you want to like be mean or if you want to like say stuff that's controversial or like if you want to just tell the truth, man, I'll tell you, man, people really, really were applauding Perry on stage when he was being like, you know, a little – um, uh, when he was, I don't know, they just like really responded to uh, controversy and, 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 and outlandish type things. Yeah, beautiful. So where do you get ideas for these shows? That's, uh, this is the mandatory pink elephant slide. I have um, no idea what this elephant is about. <laughs> it's, uh, uh, it might I feel like good. he's like, he needs like a margarita. Oh, that's a good suggestion. We could probably enhance it. The, te- the team created this. I'm very proud of their art. Maybe work. like a, a, a bowl of guacamole to snort. <laughs> snort? I don't know. I think they use their mouth, bro. All right. Well, whatever. <laughs> uh, so keep your Evernote handy. Whenever you're traveling about, um, take notes. Put put some ideas down that you could uh, bring up on your conversation. I have a little file. You know, that I, 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 will, I will comment on this. I'm going to interrupt you now, which is yeah, that good. what people want – is your opinion on the topics, conversations, problems that uh, that are going on in your community? So whatever is relevant to your to your community, people want to know what you think about it. They don't care about generic stuff. They want to know what do you think and why. So if you find yourself thinking something about a topic in your community, if your community is cycling and Lance Armstrong is drugging himself up, and you've got something to say about that, that's the stuff you want to write down in your Evernote. Do you think he took drugs? I mean, I know he took took <laughs> drugs, but everyone took drugs. It was like our drugged up guy beat your drugged up guy, and then everyone was all pissed off about it. <laughs> uh, so every as, single one of those cyclists was on drugs, bro. I followed this pretty closely. Yeah, you strike me as a. And I'm not saying it was right. I mean, I'm not for uh, steroid use. I think it's really bad for your body, and it shrinks your testicles, and it's just horrible all around. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I'm not even going to go there. So when you're out and about, um, <laughs> take pictures and talk about it. But, you know, People who aren't out and about really want to know what you're experiencing out and about. It's, it's, it's why we watch reality TV. It's why we watch TV in, in general, not me or you, but most people. They really want to know what's going on out there and you can be the reporter. And what a great job to fly around the world reporting on uh, Amazing events like America's Cup. Yeah, so. I do a um, behind-the-scenes video for every event I'm at, and it's always super popular. Really? And is it face-to-camera or is it audio? Well, if you go to Smart Marketer, check it out. I mean, it's both. But but basically, it's, hey, this is Ezra. I'm going you know, behind the scenes at this event, and uh, I want to share with you what's going on. And then I show a little footage from it, and I talk about it and that kind of thing. Perfect. Yeah, be, be your own broadcaster. That's the deal. And start with general topics and work your way down to specific stuff. So... General is uh, podcasting on, uh, you know, on iTunes. Specific is uh, how to set up your Android uh, to receive podcatchers or whatever. It's not as not as important to the rest of the people. Like half the people use iOS, so they're gone. They don't care about Android. So start with the big general topics to increase your listenership, and then get a bit specific so that you can really dial in for the people who want something amazing. So how do you produce these things? That's the big question we get asked. Uh, this is what it looks like in our uh, Dropbox. We have some sounds that we use on our episode. We have the pre-intro underlay. We have the intro. We have a weekly challenge sound signature. We have uh, comments one. And Ezra, you, you put these together for us. Your team does these. So 
uh, it was really nice to to have it, but it gives a consistent. And they feel were terrible, the by the way. Oh yeah, <laughs> so James did not like them. Um, Only but because they, of the I Aussie accent was a very unappealing yeah. Australian accent. And we should redo that at some point. But the, but I'm the actual used to it, you know. uh, music was not bad. Music was good. All original, anyways. All original. Uh, and by the way, we turned it into a bit of a debate with our audience. So we you know we could and we had know, put some questions heated to your replies audience. to that. Yeah, totally engage your audience with questions. Ask them what they think about how you're doing it and that kind of thing. And whether you act on it or not, it's up to you. We ask people how they feel about swearing. We ask people, uh, well, we ask people all sorts of things. Now, here's my favorite equipment items. I'm just going to list them from left to right. On the left is a Rode SmartLav, R-O-D-E. Love Smart that thing. L-A-V. That's a, good, that's a good device. If you only had one mic, I guess that's all you'd, you'd want if you if you travel around. It plugs into your iPhone or your iPad or your Mac. And I've recorded plenty of interviews just on that. Ezra and I have done ones at our Hawaii retreat. I've recorded on the road by wrapping it around the sun visor. I record in a hotel room, s- s- clipping it to the, the lid of a computer. That's the one I did with Clay. All on that one device. And if you get a little wind sock that looks like a dead cat, uh, it's also good outdoors. Just uh, immediately to the right of that, is the Zoom H4n. That's a full high-end uh, XLR cable, digital quality recorder. You can record to a shotgun mic or a pin mic that needs 48-volt phantom power. Very high quality, super strong, lasts for ages. Uh, excellent portable recorder if you want to take something a bit heavier. That's a better quality item. Um, moving along the, down the bottom there, you see the Rode RODE. Uh, shotgun mic. That's what. Uh, that's the sort of mic that I use for my videos because I don't want to get all laved up. I don't want to be clipping things on. I don't want to see something on my shirt. So I put this just out of shot pointing at me. You do need a quiet environment for that. You do need power for it and the quality of it's fantastic. It's like semi-professional. I use an NTG3 and I mix that into a powered uh, mixer on my camera and that goes into the camera then and I strip out the audio for my uh, for my super fast business shows from that device. And the device that Ezra and I are talking on now is a Rode uh, podcaster mic, that white one on the top right. We use a shock mount, that's that little elastic cradle that it sits in, and a swing arm to bring it in right close to where we're talking. And that is, uh, it's a USB powered microphone, plugs straight into your computer. It's the easiest to use, the best quality sound at the best value price, and it's super reliable, and I highly recommend that for home podcasting. Yeah. Yeah, so that's what it looks like up there. <laughs> no, 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 sorry. No, I'm with you. My brother just got here with a big bag of poker chips and a um, uh, some crackers and peanut butter. You want to say hi, Adam? Hi. Right up right in here. Hi. Hey, Adam. I hear he's a pretty good poker player too. He's a very good poker player. Um, so we're going to have a little poker night here in a little bit. But, um, nice. we'll, but I, I was we'll following along. So, yeah, no, I'm, I'm cool. I was following along, and I do just want to say that um, I now get uh, uh, feedback um, from my community and, and, and the folks who follow my blogs on my e-commerce stores that, like, our content sounds so much better than everyone else's, and we're just recording with Rode Smart Lab and Rode Podcaster microphones, so it really does make sound a Sound quality um, is very important when people put headphones on. You want to be sounding good. Uh, so what we do is we both record at our end, and if the line's patchy or it broke, broke up, we take the separate recordings and join them back together later on. That's called a double-headed recording. Uh, usually for our podcasts, we're just using Skype and call recorder for Mac, and that gives us a good high-quality recording that we can uh, send off for editing. Now, the show notes look like this in our a Google Doc. Ezra types out a Google Doc, and we work our way through the Google Doc as we do the show, and we can both see it live on screen. And it's got a checklist. We make sure we're recording. We count down yeah, three, two, one. It really one. helps to have your thoughts organized ahead of time and so that, you, that you've got somewhere, something to follow. You know? Professionals prepare, and that's, that's something right. we've learned. Uh, read and out you've your got comments. Also, I just want to say really quickly. Yeah. Um, be willing. Be critical of your own content. Be willing to scrap an episode if it's yeah, not we've, good. Yeah, we've we've thrown a few away, haven't we? <laughs> we we've thrown two away, and yeah, we got to know, the end, and we're like, no, nah, that wasn't good enough, and we we binned it. 
not that we're super perfectionists, obviously you're watching this, but uh, that we do have a minimum standard and it's important over the long haul to have brand pre preservation. Uh, so we get comments on the show with our discuss commenting system and uh, we also get people commenting in iTunes and they, they uh, dial in on SpeakPipe, it's a little widget. There's another one called Japkin, which does pretty much the same thing, but also has video, uh, which they're strongly encouraging us to test. I saw them at the show. Oh god, those guys are those guys are all after they're after me, man. <laughs> they're <laughs> after me too. We met three of them and shook their hand three times each. Uh, but anyway, Speakpipe's like the original one that we've been using, and uh, it's been very very good and and lends itself well for audio mediums. Uh, but I think if you want to capture videos for a video show, maybe there are other options like Japkin. But people just record and uh, then it, it gets put into your uh, file. We download it. We play it back on air uh, and then we respond to it. And this is all, all done behind the scenes and it's a pretty simple process. What we also do is we illustrate every post. Your nose looks like a lion there. I just thought it looks quite cool. Uh, we actually so it looks have a nothing custom like me, picture by the way. for every post to make it more engaging on on our site when people visit. But it also gives us SEO and opportunities to get ranked. James will will create these pictures for you. By the way, I think if you could do them in a batch of fifteen or something I think like it's that, right? Ten, ten at a time, 10. or something. Yeah, you can do that. Superfastbusiness.com. Um, yeah, superfastbusiness.com. Click on the products tab, and it'll be in the website section. Now, what do you think of when you see this slide? Is the bananas? Ah, uh, I think of a very strange time in my life. <laughs> <laughs> uh, the reason I put this is we use our pictures on the show to illustrate the, the important points of the show. The important point of this show was how um, at one stage in Ezra's life, he thought it was perfectly fine to eat a couple of dozen bananas in a single day. And of course, I had a lot I had of a fun very with skewed. That. Uh, we did, well, uh, we did a poll at this event, and I don't think we had anyone go past 10 a day. I think we lost I think most we, people. I don't think five. we didn't go past five. Dude. Yeah, five. It was out. So we, you know, we was way off, way off. And that, that's the fun of the podcast. We discover, uh, you know, the differences and the, and the craziness that goes on. Uh, the other slide I put up at, uh, is uh, where I went down to the beach in front of my house here. I drew sex on the sand. I took a picture of it because we had an episode about sex. And who did we record that with? That one was with my mom. We have my brother on this episode, my mom on that episode, and that's just because she's got really interesting viewpoints on on, on that topic. It was and, so and it was totally it was a lot. It was a lot of fun playing to. with the concept that uh, we were talking about sex with Ezra's mom. It was um, it was the least commented on episode and one of the most listened to. <laughs> and uh, and I had to admit I I walked about a hundred meters away from my house when I uh, made this and then I quickly rubbed it out. And uh, you did what now? Don't try it on. <laughs> so it goes very quiet after I sorted him out at the uh, event. Then we, so, we I know. It, uh, sorry. It, it, what happened was someone at the event tried to call James out, and James smashed him. Yeah, I did. It was. Uh, I've had training though from a comedian, so it was good. The, not not in being funny, but in handling hecklers. Because as a speaker, you need to be able to handle hecklers. So. We had my mum on the show as well. We had your mum and my mum. My mum was talking about networking, which was a far more publicly you know, acceptable discussion and had a lot of comments. And uh, Most popular episode to date. I just, it was mom. like the easiest way to say, listen, mum, if you're going to friend all my friends on Facebook, why don't you just come on my show? Just go straight to the source. I thought I'd leave it at that, but surprisingly for me, when I went to my next meetup of uh, super fast business members, which we do once a month here in Sydney, and there's about 25 people. I was having dinner, and a lady next to me, she said, oh, I had uh, lunch with your mum the other day. I'm like, oh, seriously? <laughs> she just knows no bounds. So awesome. uh, in terms of networking, she's like the gold, gold A-grade standard. Uh, we have here um, interesting pictures so from travels. This was um, the reclining Buddha in Thailand. I think it's the third largest one in the world. And so we take pictures on, on where we are and we talk about it in the show and we bring people into our world. And then we had uh, we had a bit of a, a messy one with the leadership episode. The first picture we used was of Adolf Hitler and we had to replace it with this picture of George Patton because it was 
extremely unpopular. We had almost hate comments on Facebook from how how could we? And it wasn't like we were like endorsing. We saying he's Hitler. the greatest leader ever. We were just saying that he had some very interesting persuasion techniques that allowed him to lead a nation off a cliff, basically. And uh, and it's interesting to observe that in hindsight. And I just watched a documentary about the Third Reich. It was fascinating, and uh, people didn't take it the right way. So that was where we had to make a judgment call and say, you know what, people probably misunderstand us, so let's just uh, give them something they can understand and relate to. Uh, also, just revealing personal stuff. We have, um, uh, I talk about riding my mountain bike and stuff, so put pictures. Uh, we talked about uh, early days at school. Uh, in, in an episode that I had, I put a picture and I, I talk about traveling light and I put a picture of the backpack. People want to relate visually. And if you can bring people back to your show on the internet as well as in iTunes, what can happen is they join your email list. And if you want, you could uh, drop a remarketing cookie to be able to reach those customers while they're visiting other websites on the internet. There's a good tip for you. Now, in terms of uh, spontaneity, I went to uh, an event in uh, Santa Barbara and another attendee there was looking for a lift back to Los Angeles and I had a rental car. I offered him a lift on the basis that he goes through the notes from the event. So we did our behind the scenes show. We, uh, you can see in the middle of the screen there. I mean, the you top. did a behind the scenes show before the event was even over at this last event. The point here is like <laughs> there are so many kinds so many of content. So many types of things that you could talk about. And so, you know, the reason why we're harping on about this is one of the most common things that we hear from would be content creators is I don't feel like I have anything to talk about, but it's yeah, just that's not ridiculous. The case. Like if you've ever presented, for example, you could do what we're doing go through your slides and talk about it. Um, I, I put in, I don't know, maybe five or six hours of effort to build these slides on the airplane. I don't want to use them just beautiful once. slides, by the way. Absolutely beautiful. Oh, thanks, man. Well, it's a combination yeah. of a team and me. Uh, I, I'm, not, I'm not the illustrator, but they illustrate well. But this guy, I never met him before in my life, but we had a great trip down to Los Angeles. We recorded on the, the smart lab between the uh, hanging off the sun visor. People really liked the show, and it, and it was uh, a great way to get value from that event. This was, uh, again, using that little windsock and smart lab in uh, the hotel room in San Diego. I interviewed Clay Collins the night before we presented and the next the day, day before I broke his ring. Yeah, it was, it was, this is the day we reached a million downloads, but, uh, the, the blog post went live. I just handed it off to the team. They publish it, they tag it, categorize it. Um, they illustrate it. And we had, uh, 631 downloads by the time we went up on the platform. And this was recorded the, the night before the day before. So it just shows the power. If you think about how, how much would it cost you to get 631 people to visit your site using an AdWords campaign in the internet space? I'm sure it's going to be a dollar a click, you know, as a metric. So it's really powerful. Now, there's a big tendency. People want to know all the tools. They want to do this themselves. Don't do this yourself, maybe in the beginning, but don't do it yourself for the long term. It's not sustainable and you'll, you'll end up getting sick of it and you'll stop doing it. So what I do is I have a Dropbox and I put my audio in there and the team take over. They add in the intro musics and outros, they cut ums and ahs, they edit it all up nice, they clean it up on, uh, uh, so this is what it looks like behind the scenes. We have the images that go with the show, we've got the MP3, we have our show sounds and then the transcription. They join it all together and make a blog post out of it. But before they do that, they run it through Orphonic and Orphonic is a wonderful app that will pretty much replace a sound engineer. It will balance and level different speakers. It'll remove background noise. Uh, I mean, heck, it probably even makes you a cappuccino. It's that good and it's free. And it doesn't actually make you a cappuccino, by the way. I just threw that in there in case anyone thought. It also comes it on your iPad you or iPhone. So you can record yeah. straight into your iPhone, into Orphonic with your Rode Smart Lab, and then upload it to your Amazon account or Libsyn account or Dropbox account and have it on your site or SoundCloud. So I know Ed Dale records on Orphonic and he just talks straight into his phone 
and then it's, it balances and levels and it loads straight up to his SoundCloud. That's it. That is the entire process of production. Talk, upload. It's almost too easy, isn't it? Now, we use yeah. Amazon S3. Other people use Libsyn. It doesn't matter which one you use. They're both going to be cheap. They're both going to be good. This is where you host your media. Do not host your media on your website. That is a bad idea. You'll eventually choke up your server. Uh, it'll give people a sloppy download speed and it'll slow down your website. So you want to put it away from your website. So how do you publish this? Well, we suggest you have your own platform. I'm really big on this I'm, and it's paid me big dividends. Put it on a WordPress website that, that loads fast, that works on any screen. This is called responsive. We build websites at Superfast Business. You can check out our products page. We build websites. We've built Think at Get. We've built Superfast Business. And we've built Freedom Ocean. Like we know how to create a podcast website if you want help with that. And then you install a, a Blueberry PowerPress plugin. It's free and it will guide you through setting up iTunes. It shows you the link to submit. It tells you the size of the artwork, which I think is 1400 by 1400. You get to name your show. You tell it where the media is and away you go. Every time you do a post, then your, your episode is published. You only have to submit it once ever. And also I suggest you build a list. So we build an email list from Think at Get. And everyone who opts in, we tag for the show, and we only use that list to broadcast show episodes. And that's important. It's part of the agreement that I have with my co-show hosts like Ezra and Timbo. And this is how we collect emails. On Freedom Ocean, we have an above-the-fold opt-in, and we're offering podcast updates, transcripts, and bonus PDF reports. And you can see also we have tabs pointing to my site and Tim's site. On Think at Get, we have an above the fold opt in to get alerts whenever we update. And we have a tab pointing to my site and Ezra's site. So, this is how we drive traffic to our products. We also, on Superfast Business, have an above the fold opt in that offers a free course. And then on the sidebar, I have two courses that I give away. And since I've been doing this, I've gone up to around 3,000 opt ins a month. That's what it's running at right now. Uh, we also have um, landing pages directly. You can put a specific URL. For example, I talk about wealthification.com or owntheracecourse.com. They lead to squeeze pages. Now, I used to drive my banners to the squeeze page and I was getting 32% opt-ins for one course, 67 for the other. Uh, but what I've done now is put lead boxes, the Clay Collins thing. We've linked the banner to a lead box which pops the opt-in right in front of the page it doesn't take the customer anywhere. And so far, when I first put that on and I put this up the first day, the opt-ins are stratospheric. They've stabilized a bit now, but I can tell you it looks like it's a winner and uh, the, the stats show that I should continue to do that. So I recommend lead boxes. So we also have a little uh, yellow thing that flies up called a dream grow scroll triggered box and it's a free plugin for WordPress and that gets a lot of opt-ins. It only engages when people scroll below the fold and uh, that means they're engaged and interested in the site so they're, they're more likely to put an opt-in. And here are our sponsors. Ezra and I don't let anyone else put their advertising in our show unless it's an affiliate offer or something like a book that we recommend on Amazon. We put our own products and our own uh, events into the show. And, and you can monetize the show yourself, and you really should. I mean, you oh, really you, should oh, be monetizing think, your think content. It's the best deal. And, and, you know, other people sell their show for, to sponsors, and that's fine if you get a million downloads. But I don't think that's the best business model for us, and probably not for most people. This podcast will be the perfect thing to promote any service or ebook or e commerce store or whatever. Just keep driving people to your offer. So, how we do it, uh, have a products tab on the top of super fast business and I'll drive people to that. On our site, we have a products tab as well and we mentioned your brown box formula and we sold how much of it? Sold about 40 grand just from yeah. the, I was really yeah. surprised by and that how much we sold to just you. the podcast. Uh, I, I didn't share that one. That was uh, all your stuff and it's because it was your product and- Little plug we, for what a good guy James is. Uh, 
And then we do stuff together. We thought it'd be cool to go to Hawaii. And so we, we um, basically talked about it in the show, put a couple of pictures, and we ended up having people join a retreat. And there's us recording with a smart lab in the middle of a dinner table. There's and Carrie. She makes it in the most Carrie episodes. In the, the far right there. Uh, and it was a great event. It was, it was really a good proof of concept, but it was a magical event, a small event. And we had a house in the, the North Shore uh, right there at Pipeline. I have a feeling if we do it again, we're going to get a significantly larger crowd. Yeah, I'd say so. Now, here's the question. Show notes versus transcription. What I found is the show notes are ample. We only do show notes on Think At Get. I do transcriptions for my other shows, but it's it's more expensive and it takes longer. Uh, I think the easiest way is to have show notes, which is just bullet points summarizing what's talked about in the show. Once you publish, you want to promote. So I talk about in Own the Race Course, people will be familiar with the uh, octopus. iTunes is one of the tentacles. The other ones are tell your list about it. Uh, if you have affiliates, put a link. YouTube, uh, you can put pictures to an audio and have it go there. You can uh, tag your images properly, put show notes and uh, turn transcriptions into PDF and get Google love. You can mention it in forums like your latest episode. Uh, you could do banners to promote your show, and I, I suspect we probably should do that with AdRoll at some point. And all of these things feed the head of the octopus. But, of course, social media is a big one. So get yourself on the Facebook, Google+, uh, Twitter, Pinterest, and if you're in a businessy market, LinkedIn, and if you're in a different market, whatever that social forum of you know, maybe Tumblr or, or uh, Instagram. Put tweetables to make it easy for people to share your content. So put a little sentence that people just simply click to tweet and it pops up in the timeline. And remember, you've got to get people subscribing in as many places as possible. I call this a list guarantee. After someone opts into my email, I actually suggest that they subscribe on iTunes, that they join my Facebook page, they grab my YouTube channel. You want people to be subscribed to the main places you publish. Look at this picture of you, Ezra. This is a classic. I can't see it. It's a little bit of a late. Uh, see, that does not look like me. I, have to say. I think <laughs> well, the illustrator was uh, was had a few too many. Maybe. That night. So uh, what we do is we always post to social media, and uh, we tag each other, and it pulls in a picture from the post. That's why you really must have a picture on every post. It pulls the picture in. It's far more engaging, and social media seems to be a lot about visual. Uh, now, if you want people to, to have you on their show, tell people that you're available for an interview. Just put it in your PS subject line and tell them, hey, if you've got three episodes, I'd love to do an interview with you. And do this for everyone else that shows up under your show. Uh, so I think we've been on all of these shows and that's how you get your audience. Like Your audience are listening to these shows because they show up under your show. And you want to be on each one of those shows pointing people back. And I went on Chris Ducker's show recently and I picked up a mastermind student because of it. So it's a really a very positive thing to do. And when you interview famous people, put a picture of them and a quote and stick that out on social media pointing back to the show. So I've got John Carlton, Clay Collins, Chris Farrell, Sam Carpenter are all in, in uh, out there on my podcast and then I draw people back and I have Larry Benet, John Lee Dumas, Derek Halpern and Pat Flynn. Uh, I actually love Pat Flynn's quote, creating the passive income is not passive, it takes a lot of work. Uh, so there you go. Now when you broadcast your email list, put a picture that relates to the podcast and have very clear specific call to action. Click here to listen. That's very clear. You can't be more clear than that. So you'll get a high click through and an open rate. And if you do really good work, you'll end up getting syndicated by people for free, you know, without even a um, affiliate program. Yannick Silva sent out to his whole list about uh, an interview that I did with Clay Collins, and that was very generous. And it brings me a new audience from a list of people who may not have heard about me. Also, if you become reachable, you'll get great feedback. So I reply to emails, and I put that in some of my emails. Hey, P.S. I reply. People reply back. They go, hey do you know about or have you heard or I really love Tao or thank you so much for everything you do, all these things. Now, underneath the podcast, let people download the, um, 
resources you talk about or a PDF of the show, this gets wild opt-ins. And also have sharing widgets on your post. So let people share it on Facebook, Twitter, uh, Google+. Let people um, click on an icon that takes them to iTunes so they can get onto that subscription feed. And let people play it and download it from the website so that they don't have to go to iTunes. And God help some people, they don't even have an iPhone or an iPad yet. Uh, so they need to be able to stream it from your site or download it to their computer. Every time I've removed this, I've had complaints, so it's better just to put it up there. Now, if you do a fair bit of content, you can even stretch it further by having a weekly digest and bring together the best of the week. Uh, John Lee Dumas said it was the best weekly digest he gets, you know, killer idea, and I think he started it too. He sent me specific feedback about that, uh, so it's a great technique to leverage it. And ask your guests. Who else would be great to have on the show? This is a great way for you to get extra uh, guests referring each other. Of course, install a remarketing cookie into your show and you will be able to reach people with banners even when they're not on your site. And just a final tip, you can actually reinstall a current blog to iTunes just uh, get out your microphone and talk some of your blog posts and then add it to iTunes and you will have a show right now. So that's our final note. In summary, podcasting is a really good thing to do because people have access to phones. It builds you a long-term audience that is farming, that you can make offers to, you can make a lot of money with it. If you would like to be far more profitable with it, uh, be sure to listen to Ezra's smartmarketer.com and see what he's doing with it. Have a look at superfastbusiness.com and see what I'm doing with it. Make sure you subscribe to thinkactget.com, our joint episode show. Have a look at Freedom Ocean to see how my original one turns out. And get into Superfast Business membership. Our community is where I talk about this stuff on a higher level. It's the best place to learn behind the scenes stuff and especially if you want to evolve into the video stuff and, and take it to the next stage and if you want to build a business strategy around it, superfastbusiness.com forward slash membership. I'll see you on the inside. Ezra, thanks so much for going through these slides again and uh, creating something that we can share with our community. Thank you, man, and sorry that I was so quiet. Uh, it's not usually my style, as you well know. I know. Um, you've got poker to attend, so I'm going to let I, you go. I do. All right. Well, thank you guys so much. We really highly suggest that you get into podcasting. We think it's um, the... You know, it's the predominant form of information consumption for entrepreneurs and business owners, and it will become the predominant form of information consumption for long-form, like educational-style information for most markets. So check it out. Get into it. If you have questions about it, uh, join Superfast Business. Thanks. See you, buddy. Bye.